아 잠깐 제시카 외동딸 일리노이 시카고 과선배는 김지모 그는 이사촌 Bong Joon-ho is a filmmaker obsessed with rhythm. You can sense it in all of his films, but in his latest, Parasite, he outdoes himself. The tempo is perfectly calibrated. As a viewer, it almost feels like you're surfing the story. The way the editing and camera work, sound design and music carries you from moment to moment. I think Bong knows that getting the pacing exactly right is the only way he can get his bold tonal shifts to work. The result of such attention to rhythm is a totally immersive viewing experience. The cadence of the whole movie is tightly controlled, but there's a montage about 40 minutes in that distills his mastery into a perfect diamond of a sequence. 60 shots, almost exactly five minutes. Definitely my favorite five minutes of the year. And I think it's worth taking a closer look at because it's really a thing of beauty. One of the things I find fascinating about the nerd writer Evan Pushak is the way he communicates insight, which is different from the other video essayists on YouTube, especially the ones with millions of subscribers. Whereas his contemporaries insist on simply communicating their opinions or educational information, the nerd writer disregards those as his primary strategy, understanding that his essays will ultimately still accomplish both. So I thought it would be illuminating to look at how the nerd writer writes a video essay. In this case, the opening of his essay on Parasite, the best film of 2019. This 155 word, 53 second introductory paragraph displays a range of techniques that the nerd writer uses all the time in his essays. The first thing to note is the opening sentence, which is effectively the thesis of the piece, or the answer to an assumed question that the essay is asking. And that thesis usually communicates a particular insight unique to Pushak's worldview. This commitment to unique insight and razor sharp perception give the nerd writer's videos their gravitas. Looking only at the past four years, the nerd writer has released 136 video essays. And of those, 30 of them, or 22%, begin with a thesis statement within the first two sentences. And 36 have a version of the thesis as the title of the video. In this video, Pushak is so committed to his thesis statement that he even restates it midway through the introduction another classic essay tactic. But that isn't the only way Nerdwriter videos begin. I told you that this video begins with a thesis statement, and while that is technically true, it isn't the actual opening. The video begins like this. At first glance, it might seem like he picked this particular scene because it's attention-grabbing. It's funny, light, and even elegant. But if you look closer, you realize that this scene is actually a quintessential example of the thesis, of the rhythm of the film. In other words, Evan shows the viewer the thesis before he states it. And it doesn't always have to be an example directly from his subject. He often starts a video with some completely random subject, seemingly unrelated to the topic at hand. Like this video about Interstellar, which begins with 90 seconds describing Avatar. In the hands of less experienced essayists, this can come off as clickbait. But in the hands of the nerd writer, it builds interest by approaching the topic sideways. The importance and effectiveness of these cold openings on the thesis is how it makes a deductive structure inductive. Most essays follow this structure, but the nerd writer reverses the first two. This is a brilliant way to subvert the classical essay in a manner that serves its new video medium. It allows the nerd writer to forego an elaborate introduction of the topic's background and a verbal explanation of the context by immediately immersing the audience within the context. Of those 136 essays, 70 of them, or 51%, begin like this. It allows the viewer to experience the insight Pushak is communicating even before a single word about it is expressed. This is what makes a Nerdwriter video stand out, and he is so good at it. I went back and watched only the introductions of those 136 video essays, and even though I was specifically looking for it, there were still instances where I didn't initially realize that what I was seeing at the top of a video was a direct illustration of the thesis. 
But beginnings aren't the only thing the Nerd Rider excels at. He is also exceptional at brevity. The structure of the second sentence of this essay expects the viewer to have a prior knowledge of the subject. He only devotes 17 words to background about Bong Joon-ho and about Parasite. We live in an era of information. If we don't know something about a subject, we can easily do a quick search. Knowing this keeps the nerd writer from feeling the need to start every video essay with background information most of which has nothing to do with his point. It keeps his videos economical and laser focused, and it communicates to the viewer that this video will not waste your time. And the nerd writer also doesn't waste words. The rest of this opening paragraph is riddled with precise adjectival phrases and dramatic similes. Seven of the paragraph's 10 sentences contain this powerful descriptive language. And there's something rather well, rhythmic about his word choice and delivery in this essay, which pairs well with the thesis of the video, as well as the rhythm of Pushak's own editing skills. While lauding the rhythmic editing techniques of Jin Mo Yang, the nerd writer incorporates those very same editing techniques into his essay. The parasite montage in question builds in intensity over time and uses pairs of mirrored shots to have a conversation with itself. This video essay does the exact same thing. The nerd writer adopts the style of his subject in the creation of his video. This is most clearly seen in the way he uses aspect ratio. Instead of cropping a normal 16 by 9 frame, he creates his entire video in the aspect ratio of his subject. Over the eight years Evan Pushak has been the nerd writer, many things about his videos have changed. That's apparent from watching his very first videos. But one thing has been consistent from the very beginning. Whether he's talking about an ugly painting or some director filming a vase, his expert use of voiceover, animation, soothing music, and storytelling create something like an interest magnet. His videos pull you into an orbit of ideas and never fully let you go. If we want to write like the nerd writer, we can study his techniques and make pretty decent copies of his work. YouTube is full of cheap nerd writer substitutes. But there's one thing that we can never truly possess, no matter how much we study or imitate his style. Something completely unique to Evan Pushak. His point of view. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. As you can see, I really like the Nerd Writers videos. And if you do too, I think you will also really like the other videos on this channel. So subscribe now and you can look out for more videos as we make them. I also want to thank our patrons. We couldn't do this channel without you. And if you would like to also pledge a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, you can do that by clicking over here and check out our patron only podcast, which we are making available to everyone right now during COVID. Thank you so much. And I think there's only one thing left to say. Coffee on a Tuesday.